Falconeer is not a game I ever expected to see on Switch. It was a poster child for the Xbox Series X launch with gorgeous art design and gameplay that ran at a native 4K resolution at 60 frames per second or 1800p at 120 frames per second. On Series S, the Xbox's less powerful all-digital system, it runs at 1800p and 60 frames per second. On the last-gen Xbox One, it runs at 1080p and 60 frames per second. No matter what variant of Xbox you had at the time of Falconeer's launch, it was known for getting the best out of all of them. Looking at those numbers, one would expect that a Switch version would be 30 FPS and low resolution, as the power gap between an Xbox Series X and a Nintendo Switch is pretty monstrous. However, developer Thomas Sala was quick to point out that yes, even the Switch version runs at 60 frames per second, both docked and handheld. So how is this possible? Obviously cuts needed to be made somewhere. Join us as we dig into the Switch version thanks to a very early copy from Wire Productions of Falconeer, which will officially release on the Switch this August. Before we get too deep into comparisons, I do want to point out that the dynamic time of day and weather make getting perfect like-for-like -like footage virtually impossible during actual gameplay. I'll also note that while we have Falconeer running on Xbox Series X, our capture hardware maxes out at 1080 and 60 frames per second. Alright, here we go. At a glance, you may not think that Falconeer is a very technically demanding game. Its famously textualist art design and relatively low-poly assets seem like they ought to scale flawlessly to just about any platform, but there's more going on here than meets the eye. From the moment Falconeer reaches the main menu, you are done with loading screens. From here on out, regardless of what chapter you jump into, what mission you take on, and even if you fast travel, everything is instantaneous, and this holds true on Switch. It should of course be noted that the initial load time itself is obviously a bit longer on Switch, though still not particularly lengthy, clocking in at just over 20 seconds from splash screen to intro. After that, Falconeer presents a truly seamless open world. In terms of graphical cutbacks, the overall presentation of Falconeer feels very comparable to the Series X version. Perhaps the most obvious change, though, is the removal of real-time shadows from both the environment and from character portraits. This is most noticeable when flying low over a populated island that is littered with buildings or on specific character portraits. For example, characters with hoods over their heads wind up looking very weirdly brightly lit. That being said, the shadows Falconeer employs are generally pretty soft, as lighting is often presented as being diffused through a cloudy sky. As a result, the difference isn't something that's immediately noticeable. One of the more interesting changes comes in terms of texture resolution, but not in a way we'd usually think of it. Falconeer is, as I mentioned earlier, a textureless game. That being said, it does use noise patterns to generate specific elements. Most obviously, these are present on the surface of water as it breaks against islands or gets churned up in a storm. We can see it used to scatter snow on surfaces in cold environments, and though I'm not sure it's generated in exactly the same way, the clouds in the sky exhibit a similar pattern. My understanding is that these patterns are generated when the game launches, and it can then pull from them as needed. Normally, when I say lower resolution textures, you'd think blurrier textures, but when it comes to a procedural texture like this, that isn't really the case. Take the edges of this snow, for example. As you can see, the edges are nice and sharp, no blurriness. However, the noise pattern is simply generated to a lower level of detail. The fine furrows along the edges are missing. The same can be seen in the water caustics. They're still nice and sharp, but the pattern overall simply doesn't include some of the smaller details. Similarly, the clouds wind up looking a bit more rounded off. As I said, I'm not entirely sure the clouds are generated from the exact same noise pattern, but a similar enough technique is being used to result in a similar simplification of their appearance. The cool thing about how these patterns are generated is that the lowering of their resolution doesn't inherently make one look worse than the other. Whereas in games using traditional textures, we'd wind up with blurry surfaces or a lot of pop-in, Falconeer simply generates a texture that's perfect for the platform on which it's running. As a result, it's hard to really call this a downgrade, but more of just a difference. The only other change we were able to pick up on is what appears to be a lowering of the resolution of the mesh used for water. Essentially, think of the ocean as a flat surface subdivided into a bunch of individual faces. A wave pattern is then sent through that surface. The more faces that surface is divided into, the smoother the wave will appear. It looks like the Switch uses a lower resolution surface than the Series X. As a result, some of the smaller details when viewed from up close wind up looking a little more angular. 
The water still looks great, especially from high in the sky, but when you get to a low altitude, the difference does become more obvious. Beyond the water, I didn't notice any loss in geometric detail anywhere else. Your bird, enemies, and islands all appear identical to other versions. So the ultimate question then is, did these changes work? Is Falconeer able to maintain its ambitious target of 60 frames per second? And what about image quality? Well, when it comes to resolution, Falconeer runs docked at 720p. Given that the base Xbox One, which also targets 60 frames per second, runs at 1080p, this sounds about right. While something like 900p may have been possible if they were to target 30 frames per second, 720p at 60 seems perfectly reasonable. Meanwhile, while playing handheld, Falconeer runs at a resolution of 480 vertical pixels by 854 horizontal pixels. Once again, a 30fps mode may have allowed handheld to hit a native 720, however the untextured art design of Falconeer makes the resolution much less noticeable, especially on a smaller screen. I will say some sort of anti-aliasing would be a big help here, especially in docked mode as the image appears very raw and the stair-stepping is pretty obvious. But with all that in mind, the answer to can it hit 60 frames per second is a definite yes. While occasionally flying straight down into some complex geometry can cause a momentary dip to 57 frames per second, the vast majority of gameplay is buttery smooth. This holds true in handheld mode as well. Falconeer feels absolutely excellent to play. Beautiful aerial combat games like this really shine at a higher frame rate, and being able to take this one on the go while maintaining 60 frames per second is no small accomplishment. While yes, cuts have been made, I would not for an instant consider this a remotely compromised port. If Falconeer were to have released in this state as a Switch exclusive, I'd no doubt be praising it for its performance. The fact that it's proved so scalable really is a testament to its original design. Anyway, that's all I have for now, but keep an eye out for much more on Falconeer as we approach its launch, including additional previews and a full review once the time comes. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to Nintendo World Report TV, and check out NintendoWorldReport.com for a whole lot more. You can hang out with us by joining our Discord using the link in the description, and if you have any questions about the Switch version of Falconeer, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, at JTS992. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more, all for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.